Hello. In this video, I will demonstrate how to enable and use the new GuardDuty EKS Runtime Monitoring feature. EKS Runtime Monitoring uses a new GuardDuty security agent that adds runtime visibility such as file access, process execution, and network connections to identify malicious and suspicious activity in your EKS workloads. After collecting this data, it sends it to the GuardDuty Analytics Engine, where we apply multiple stateful and stateless detections in addition to utilizing the threat intelligence sources. The lightweight agent helps GuardDuty identify specific containers within your EKS clusters that are potentially compromised. It can also detect attempts to escalate privileges from an individual container to the underlying EC2 host and the broader AWS environment. With this new launch, GuardDuty can attack threats at each layer of the Kubernetes deployment on EKS. We already monitored the EKS management plane events as part of CloudTrail monitoring, Kubernetes control plane events through Autolog monitoring, now connections on EC2 worker nodes as part of VPC flow logs, and now with runtime monitoring, we can monitor the system level events as well. Next, let me show you how to enable this feature across your AWS organization. In order to follow along with this walkthrough, you'll need an IAM role with appropriate permissions to manage GuardDuty for your accounts. Log into your GuardDuty Delegated Administrator account and go to the Accounts page. Here you can see all the member accounts in your AWS organization and the status of guard duty for each of these accounts. You can also see whether specific features are enabled or disabled for each of the accounts. As you can see, EKS runtime monitoring is not enabled. Let's go enable it. Enabling EKS runtime monitoring is a two-step process. First, you enable the feature by selecting the accounts you need it enabled on, edit protection plans, select EKS runtime monitoring, and then enabled for the selected accounts. The second step is to select how you want to manage the agent. GuardDuty integrates with EKS to manage the agent on your behalf across your EKS clusters. If you select this option, the lifecycle of the agent is managed by GuardDuty, including updates to the agent. GuardDuty also creates a VPC endpoint for the agent to communicate with the GuardDuty service. To use this option, select the accounts where you want to manage the agent automatically, go to Edit Protection Plans, select Manage Agent Automatically, and then enable for the selected accounts. If you choose to manage the agent yourself, you'll need to install the agent through the EKS add-ons and create the necessary VPC endpoint. Instruction for manual agent management can be found in the GuardDuty documentation. One thing to keep in mind is GuardDuty is a regional service so you'll need to replicate these configurations for each region you operate out of. You can now see EKS Runtime Monitoring is enabled, including automatic agent management for all of the member accounts across the organization in this region. Now let's see how you can monitor the coverage of this feature across your EKS clusters. Go to the EKS Protections page, then select the EKS Clusters Runtime Coverage tab. Here you can see the status of monitoring for all EKS clusters in your organization for this region. A status of unhealthy indicates GuardDuty is not able to monitor this cluster. The issue column shows you the reason. Additional details for troubleshooting and fixing the issue can be found in the GuardDuty documentation. Keep in mind the status of this page only shows the ability of GuardDuty to monitor this cluster and not the actual health of the cluster. Now let's go look at some findings. Go to the Findings page. I will sort through the EKS cluster findings using the resource filter. Now you can see all findings where the affected resource is an EKS cluster. Findings identified using EKS audit logs as well as runtime monitoring are visible here. Let's look at the Kubernetes anonymous access granted finding. If you click on the info link, it will give you the additional details about the finding. You can see the data source of this finding was Kubernetes audit log. This finding informs us that a user on the Kubernetes cluster successfully created a role binding to bind the user system anonymous to a role. This enables unauthenticated access to operations permitted by the role, which is not great. You'll want to investigate the user that created the role binding, which can be found under the Kubernetes user details. If this activity was malicious, then you may want to revoke this user. You may also want to investigate the role that System Anonymous user was bound to. 
This can be found under the Action section in Parameters. This section displays the contents of the manifest file. Here you can identify the role which can be used to investigate the permissions. If you scroll down further, you can see the details about the actor, such as IP address and geolocation. Now let's look at the runtime new library loaded finding. This finding is generated by EKS runtime monitoring. It tells us a process in the container loaded a new library. It is best practice for containers to be immutable and binary files, scripts, or libraries should not be modified during the lifetime of the container. A new library being loaded could be potentially malicious. Next, I'd want to know where the container lives and what clusters it belongs to. I can find this information under the resource affected section. I can look up the name of the cluster, the workload, namespace, as well as the affected container. For remediation purposes, I would need the name of the container to pause or stop it. You can also isolate the container by updating the network policy to not allow inbound or outbound communications. You can also see the container image, which could be of interest in case there were more findings associated with containers that were launched using this image. In such a situation, you may want to stop using the image and harden it before new containers are launched. If you scroll down further, you can see the runtime context. You can see the process that loaded the new library, the executable path, the process ID of the namespace, as well as the worker node process ID. You can use these to terminate the process. You can also see the library path to further investigate the library. GuardDuty also provides the lineage to identify the caller process that can help with analysis and forensics investigation of the culprit processes. You can see up to five levels of ancestry. So that's it. In this video, you learned how to enable GuardDuty EKS runtime monitoring using automated agent management, review coverage, and investigate EKS findings. EKS runtime monitoring comes with a free 30-day trial, so do give it a try. Thanks for watching.